presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, I'm Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. I'd love to take your calls at 877-927-6648. Uh, a couple of things we want to look at here <clears throat> is that after the spectacular move from the Dow way down on June the 3rd at 20, did I type that in? 24,701. Uh, there's been a move to 26,907. That's 2,200 points. Just almost straight up. There were, there were just three, four days of consolidation along the way. And now we've got to a peak B in the Chapman Wave. Oh, I forgot to do that. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we look for the lowest low bar merely to count each successively higher peak. When it gets to the fourth highest peak, that's where other things can happen. It can even recycle higher, but four is where you start to see whether there's going to be something like an instant restart to continue the move up very sharply or whether there's a sharp correction coming. But in the meantime, what we also look at is the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence you can see on this left side chart. And look at the stochastic still at 91%, even having pulled back over the last three sessions. And the Dow from 26,907 to today's low of 26,752, 150 points. 250 points, 150 points, hey, that's nothing. So this is so far just a correction in a very strong up move. I believe there should be a leg C to the upside above 26,907 in the Dow and pull back, then a leg D. And then that's where we start to look at what we what do we do for subscribers to my opening call? <clears throat> We've been long a position, 200% long position in the uh, Dow since uh, 24. 4,820, just off the low, the day of the low, <clears throat> and uh, we continue to hold that position. Now, this is going to be the big issue. Within the context of the weekly chart, there are a whole bunch of patterns. Yeah, I don't want to take too much time right now to talk about it, other than to say there's a trend line resistance, and I suspect that this trend line resistance at 27,000, between 27, let's call it 26,990, to 27,190. A lot of resistance. I don't even think 190. I think it's more like 140. If it smashes through there, that's fantastic action. My suspicion is that's where we're going to have a bit of a rest. Why do I say a bit of a rest? Because if you look at this monthly, there are a lot of people saying triple top, triple top, triple top, head and shoulders, head and shoulders. And I say absolutely correct, but absolutely wrong. Why? <clears throat> It is potential for a left side top back in January of 2016, uh, 2018 at 26,616, pulls back to 23,344, rallies back up to a new, just a modest new high, 26,951, doesn't even close above the previous high, but it gets there. October of 2018, it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars, that's nine months to do that. And then it pulls back. Now, here's the difference in my interpretation between the standard head and shoulders pattern, not one of my favorite patterns at the best of time. But that pattern said everything was completely obliterated when it smashed through 23,344 and in December of last year plummeted down to 21,712. This is either a brand new move to the upside or a move that's going to have a significant pullback but will not go back to 21,712 until it goes to at least a leg D. I suspect even much, much higher than that in the monthly chart. And at this particular point, the reason why I'm saying that you see this trend line, you see this up channel, you see this up channel with the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone technique I developed a long time ago. You see this left side, right side price time match is now, it's only a time match because the price is a rising trend line with a Chapman Wave inside wedge, inside track repellent zone right here. This is the pink and green lines. And it says by July, there should be a test somewhere 
in the 26,951 area, that, that's the all-time high. We're almost there, but we, haven't, we aren't there yet. But at the same time, the MACD has not yet turned up. That, in the long run, should be a major boost to the upside, because when eventually the MACD turn, crosses positive, you're going to have even more of an upside move, and then that MACD starts to get way up at the top. Um, that's where you've got to be nervous. And the stochastic's just at 81%. It is positive, but the month hasn't finished. We've still got a couple of days to go. Here's what's so interesting about these three charts. The daily chart is in a buy mode. Still has to go, in my work, Chapman Wave methodology, should go to a peak C, pull back, then a peak D, a higher peak above 26,907, then a higher peak above whatever C is to give you a leg D. Doesn't say that you have to plummet after D, just says that's the target on the upside. That's the premise of the Chapman Wave methodology at its core. Hey, wait a minute. We've just got to a leg D in the weekly chart. Well, the MACD is just, at Friday, it closed positive. Um, the stochastic's still weak. Uh, not weak, it's not strong, at 68%. And the monthly chart says that this is a different pattern to, what, to most of the patterns that have been seen historically. You do not get this cup and a V-shaped formation with a much, with a higher high and a much lower low and not be restarting something new. This is just my opinion. So I'm suspecting <clears throat> that over a period of uh, weeks, maybe months, we will see a break into the 27,350s, 27,400s, and that is going to trigger kind of buying that we haven't seen in a long time. I actually hope it doesn't happen sooner rather than, I'd rather have it, have it happen later. If it happens sooner, that means that we could come into a really strong uh, downtrend uh, for quite a number of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, um, maybe to confuse things. But I don't want to, I want the public to come in, not at a top. I want them to come in on a very big move to the upside, a grand move. Otherwise, what will happen is that they come in and then they're going to get uh, uh, whiplashed again, coming in at the top, as, as the public always does. And then it's take months before we can get going. Maybe that's good. I'm not sure yet. But if we're looking at the election, Trump is the stock market. He said that. And you have to consider that this market, if there is a political achievement, it's going to be that Trump managed to, say, to continue the mega bull move into 2020, into the election season. That's the only way I can see it, because any, any other way, he's not going to get one single uh, help from, from the Democrats and probably from many of his Republicans who are, to, in the main, uh, um, far, more, uh, far more leaning towards Democratic ideals these days than Republican ideals. That's just the way I see it. OK, here we go. S&P. SPX. I'm not going to waste time now because I'll waste time, take too much time. Just the same thing consolidation, MACD is good, stochastic good in the daily, weekly is improved, not great, it's in leg D, monthly chart is only in the leg A. That's going to be interesting because when it finally gets to leg D, and I don't think this is an F, I think this is really an A, that means it still has to go to a B, C, and D, and it can't even do that before the end of the year. I'll be back straight after this break to follow it up, Dow's down 34. We'll look at some of the nitty gritties that we want to be looking at, like bonds, etc. I'll be back. TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, inter, intermixed with all the analysis, I'm going to get to questions. There are just so many questions that I need to get to. Um, uh, DYAI was a question I had, I think, a few days ago by uh, uh, one of our dinners. And I said, it's, I, I believe this is a peak F. I hold off right now. Let's see how it holds the 605, I think I said, to 587 area. It's trading at 588 right now. I, I'm putting this in the category. I'm going to show you here. I'll circle it. This is the MACD just crossed negative after a peak F. Four was down. And the stochastic's gone down to 64. And the question is, why would you want to um, sell rather than buy? And my answer is, um, this is a leg D in the weekly chart. This is a leg D in the monthly chart. We just hit a peak F. In the, there's no other wave count that I can have it in the Chapman Wave methodology in the in the daily. I I. It's going to need time at best. I think it needs time and price at worst. And I see 530 to 488, 483 as a potential target to the downside. And then you can reconsider it. But I, at this particular point, I would be saying if you're long, I take something off and just be prepared to put that back. I think I said that the other day. Uh, so you're still in that position where you've got something off and you need to put it back. I would just hold off. It's it's a fabulous looking chart. Uh, DYA is, uh, I never know what this is. I can't even read it. Dia, dia, some dia, dietic, dietic. Dyadic International Inc. Dianu. This is, um, yeah, this looks very, a lot of religious connotations to this. Let me go. Give me a second here. Uh, you can tell me what it is, maybe. Um, D I, here we go. D, taking too much time. Dyadic. D Y A D I C, question mark. Uh, Unbound extends digital trust beyond physical boundaries. Oh, wait a minute, dyadic. That's the whole thing. Oh, an adjective. I knew there was something going. Dyadic in psychology. So what does the stock do? Oh, development. Re uh, reinventing biologic vaccine and drug development and production. All right. So we're in the biotech area. I'm just going to say to you, I don't change. I haven't changed my mind. I'm still going to say, take a little bit off here. It's had a big phase. It must be a news-related phase. It hasn't had an acceptance of anything because it would have just spiraled up. This is just steadily working its way higher because of the news that Biotech's put out. Favorable this, favorable that. Nothing yet has been passed. 
you can get back in a little later. They make enzymes for biologics. Great. Um, uh, all I can say is the chart says it needs a digestive phase. Come back in. Keep your core position. And you can add back. Am I even going to say to you, if it gets down to between 520 and 513, if you want to add back the part that you've taken off over the last day or so, if you have taken anything off, that, that would be a good place. Okay. Next thing I had a question is SNAP. Let's just do SNAP because SNAP has just gone to an alternative. Did I write it? Yep, typed into the den. Let's type it onto my chart. Uh, SNAP is trading at 14.94, up 17 cents. It's had a real interesting move. The MACD has been fabulous. The stochastic has been good. Uh, it's trading at 90%. Uh, so Hector wants to know, uh, what does today's action in SNAP tell you about the future in SNAP? Thanks, Hector. Uh, so, Hector, I'm just going to say that the steward, I, I think I've mentioned this maybe for you or maybe for someone else, that the way the 200-period moving average has been such a magnet and then a repellent zone, the steady with, steadiness with which SNAP, Inc., uh, has moved to the upside, Above the nine period experiential moving average, used it as, as used the 14 as a springboard every time, tells me that this whole area of 15.19 of in the weekly 200, orange 200 period experiential moving average, is going to be a zone that I think, if you're long, I'm going to say stay long. If you're just looking at it for the first time, I'm going to say I like it. If you're looking at a long-term position, if you're prepared for a one-and-a-half-point pullback, two-point pullback to consolidate this big gain over the next three weeks, uh, that's one thing. I'm just going to say I would not be buying it right now. It would absolutely be on my list because it's been working its way high against the backdrop in the market where it's been so selective to the upside. The defensive stocks like Procter & Gamble, as I said to subscribers to my opening call this morning, Procter & Gamble and Coca-Cola moving to all-time highs with the market. The indices is close to all-time highs, and yet the FANG stocks are still disappointing after nine months consolidation or more. I'm, this is a rotational move to the upside. It's actually a rotational upside correction where some stocks like a SNAP that had been oversold are, are, are using this energy to move to the upside. They're utilizing that energy very constructively. And others that used up too much energy are starting to uh, really pull, either pull back or just go sideways. So I love this stock. I'm looking out. This is only leg B in the monthly chart. I have a target of, of 20 for the 200-period exponential moving average, maybe within the next year, 14 to 26 points. That's, that's a pretty darn good move, I actually think, by January. Um, but that's not the issue. The issue is it has to clear 16.80 to 17.55, clear it, and hold there for a weekly basis to be able to get that next move up. But at the same time, it could pull back a point and a half, two points in the, any consolidation. I do expect some kind of consolidation when we reach that leg D in the Dow and the S&P uh, in the daily chart. So, yes, I like it. Long term, that's what I'm looking at. Shorter term, it's, in fact, I'm going to draw this in not as an oval but as a rectangle. And I'm going to say 1630 to 13, to 13 it's a 14.93. So 16.30 to 14-ish, that's kind of the range that I'm looking at right now. I hope that helps you. Uh, and since you asked about it, you must, uh, you, you, you're probably long if, you, if that was your question about the longer term. But I do like it. And you could even do this. You could even buy an option right now looking out. Maybe it's at 14.93, buy a $15 option. Go all the way out. Go to August or something like that, August or September, just to be in the position and not have to even look at it every day. Okay? Now, another thing that we're looking at is I wanted to show you that the TLT, this is going to be really important. Look, the TLT made a doji candle at 132.86. This is a Lehman 20-year T-bond fund four days ago. On the 20th of June, it goes to 132.86. I forgot to update, 133.51. <laughs> oh, these things are moving quickly. 133.51, I think I said. Let's try that again. 
And now it's trading under that, and it's trading at 132.92, just 60, nothing. It's just, it's just barely below. This high-level consolidation, now I'm going to draw a rectangle. I was going to do it the other day, and I thought, don't confuse the picture. Now I want to do this to say that this area is going to be tremendous support. If it comes back, in, bonds come back into the 131 area and then close under it, my guess is that it's going to go under 130 and then come back again a little later on. So I'm looking at this saying that the weekly chart, the, the daily chart, and the monthly chart are all positive. But I'm looking at the technicals of the daily suggesting that we are real close to the TBT, the inverse of bonds, having a pretty nice bounce from the 28, 28, 2888s to the 2930s soon. I'll be right back. Dow's down 46. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Just down 49, SP's down a lot more, down 10, and it's a mixed market. It's a rotational market. We're looking at, and we're talking about rotational market. We've got one of the sectors that is not doing all that well, and it had been doing well, and we're going to go to Dan in North Reading, Massachusetts. Dan? How are you? I haven't heard from you for quite a while. I'm good. How are you, Basil? I'm very good. So uh, I was looking at this one as a potential uh, put. Uh, so I didn't know what you thought for either next month or maybe further out. So we're looking at STZ, which is, uh, this is Constellation Brands, a stock. And one of the things about, this is a stock I had mentioned 
I talked about this as if it was, in fact, I saw this company just the other day. Uh, what was it? Uh, they were taking over a men's warehouse and then that it went to, it went to put. Uh, talking about puts. Um, uh, bank. Joseph A. Bank. bank. Right. A, a Joseph A. Bank was a company that most people didn't even know about. All they had seen the stores this is the one that said, buy one shirt, we'll give you two suits and three pairs of shoes for nothing. And I don't know how they stayed in business. It was an unbelievable thing. And on the stock market, you could have bought it anywhere over a period of three years, four years, five years, six years, and it just kept going higher and higher until it was taken over. Well, look at this incredible chart of SDZ up until it made peak D in the Chapman wave back at 236.62, May of 2018. And it dropped down to 150 in December, and it ran up to two, about 218, and now it's trading at 183. Now, one of the things that I've been talking about for quite some time, Constellation Brands was in spirits, um, they had also beer, and then they got into the cannabis marijuana sec sector. Now, when a company has been such an incredible uh, uh, purveyor of their own systematic and very methodical, uh, very well executed product sales, product execution, product development, and actual purchases of other, other companies, a little bit like TMO, which is thermodynamics, that's Thermo Fisher. And every time they did something, the stock just went higher. And whoever they took over, the stock went higher with Thermo Fisher, it was thermodynamics, and that's, uh, Constellation Brands did exactly that. And then all of a sudden, they go into an area that on the outset looked fantastic because it looked now they're going to go into another one of those forbidden areas, or at least legally at the time, and now unforbidden. And if they get it right, it's going to be unbelievable. Well, you can see that it's a tough business. And what I was saying is that I think this is the time that uh, Constellation Brands meets up with the costs of what they've spent. Uh, on an area that they are not expert, experts at, at all. They might go to experts, but they themselves are not the experts. And I think you're absolutely correct that it is somewhat vulnerable. And we can see that by MJ, which we are no longer in. This is the um, Alternate Harvest Cannabis ETF, uh, also struggling. In fact, the charts look not dissimilar. But this is what I would say to you. Looking at it as an option, is a much better way than to think of it as a short. So as an option, I'm not sure I want to go too far out because I don't think it's more than another couple of months. And then I think this whole sector starts to catch a light again, use the vernacular. And at the same time, I'm also looking at it and saying, Constell Constellation Brands, that big move down from 236 to 150, 70 point move, take about a third off its price. And then a big move back, and now it's given it back. A big month of, was that, what's the month? April. Then May, up April was very sharply higher. April gave back even more. And now it's kind of struggling. It hasn't been able to make its way above the halfway point. So I'm going to suggest, do you have something in mind? Because my, my guess right now is that I would be looking at something a little out of money. I wouldn't go too far. It's at 183. I'd be looking at a 180 put. I would be prepared to pay up a little bit for the put, but I would prefer to yeah. have it that close in price. Three points is nothing on a $183 stock. I'd rather have it that close and pay a little premium because the moment, if you're correct, the moment, it depends how far out you go, but let's just say you go, not July, let's say you go to August, just to be safe, you go a little further out. If you go to August, the moment it gets to the 179-ish area, you're not going one for one, but you're already moving very much, 80%, 85% with the stock, I believe, to the downside. Now, the only thing I would say to you is that there's a 200-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart at 174. It might be a bumpy ride before it gets there, and then I'm suspecting there's going to be just like two or three days of very bad news. And all of a sudden, it drops sharply. And that's probably where I would say that you would want to take your profits, regardless if it goes down even more after that. Why? Because the pattern I'm looking at suggests that STZ trading at 183.14, up $1.88 right now. Um, 
the, the, the weekly chart, MACD and stochastic are still good enough that even if it was to drop 10 points from here, the stochastic would still, still be maybe above 20%, maybe 23%. So you're getting closer and closer to where there could be a nice buy signal. That's kind of my scenario. What were you thinking of? Yeah, I was thinking of doing a strike price of maybe 182.50, and then hoping it kind of goes back into that 171 low or something close to it. But uh, I think it also has earnings on Friday, so I don't know if I dare oh. to touch it. Wow. So earnings on Friday, and this is just pure guesswork. My suspicion is that from the chart formation, especially from last month's candle, is that they can't give anything but an outlook that should improve because the price of the chart, the, the, the pattern that's being made right now is suggesting that their, their mm, initial big move into this area is still going to be costing them. So I, yeah. you know, I, I'm i with you, but I, you know, now I'm, I'm going to make, change my mind a little bit. I'm going to be thinking maybe July, don't pay too much. So you're thinking you'd wait for Friday or you'd, or, or you'd do it beforehand? Well, I don't know. I, <laughs> I almost thought maybe I'd do a straddle or do like a call way out of the money just to protect in case it goes crazy upside. So you know what? If um, you're going to do a, just if you're going off, to, I don't know. But but if you're going to do a straddle, Dan, the cost of the straddle to be able to see which one you're taking off and which one you're holding might be worth saying. You know what? Let's just wait until Friday. Why? Because if it smashes to the downside, any rebound should test the low. So you know that it should be making lower lows at least for a couple of weeks because it's not out of the woods. And if it pops to the upside, my thinking is it's still going to be in a trading band. You know what? For the yeah. risk, you're not going to be able to pay less than maybe seven or something. I'm just guessing. If you're going to July. Yeah, you're and you, about and you're, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, six and a half, seven. For that kind of price, you're going to, if you're prepared to sacrifice 50% of an option to be able to make um, a double, you know what? Can you hold on a second? I can, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you something that might be very interesting. I'll be right back. Basil Chaff and Tiger Mission Zone, Hour with Dan, Dow's down 91. And we'll be right back talking about SPC, Constellation Brands. Not a good looking chart, Pat. And we'll talk about it. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term profits prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, right, folks, we're on with Dan, and I'm going to go, Dan, this is what I was thinking about. If you are using a put, if you are wrong and you pay six six seventy five, let let's say, um, and it pops to the upside, and, and SDZ has, say, a four-and-a-half or five-point move. They say things are coming right. And the chart doesn't say it's coming right, but let's just say it does that. And it bounces from the one, whatever it is on Friday. Let's say Thursday, it's at one, uh, somewhere around 183.50, and then they come out with the news. Is it Friday after the bell? Uh, I think it was. Before. I think it's intraday. I, now that I think about it, uh, uh, that makes a big difference. Know. If it's uh, after the bell Friday, then I don't want to be hanging around over the weekend with something that's going against me. So then I'm just saying to you, step aside. It's just not worth risk. At this point, you've got your money. You're not losing your money because you've done nothing. If you do something and you're wrong, you're going to lose money. Uh, but I would, I wanted to say to you, if it comes out Thursday after the bell, or even Friday intraday, if you're already in the position and you're prepared to say, look, I'll take a 50% stop on my position, if you are correct, I can see this just dropping 8 to, to 12 points really quickly if they've done something wrong. And that's a big gain. So your, your risk to reward, I think, is way better if you're prepared to take a 50% loss on your position. Otherwise, just, you know what, wait until after the after the, the news and then start discussing it. If it's intraday Friday and I'm on the show, then we'll, we'll talk about it as something to do. But if, if you don't want risk at all, although taking an option means that you're prepared to take some risk, you know that. But I'm just going to say to you, step aside, make a, write it down on paper exactly what you were going to do, and then we'll see what happens. But check when the uh, earnings report is. If it's after the bell Friday, I say step aside. I don't want to have a weekend where a whole bunch of things can happen. But if it's like Thursday night or Friday during the day, you can start to plan it. But if you want to take a pure risk and it doesn't come out Friday after the bell, but it comes out before that, then I'm saying you could you could take a six and a half points. You might only get three and a half if you have to get out. But if you are correct, that's going to be, a, I think it should be a big winner. I hope that helps you. We can yeah, talk about it again maybe in a couple it, of days. It does. And um, I think it's, yeah, it's before the market opens on Friday. And oh, okay. I I kind yeah, of like then I'm going to say to you, think about what you want to do. Kind of Let's talk about it again. Maybe th even Thursday is good enough. We'll have time. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good, good ideas. So, folks, I just want to do this. Uh, Basil, is a time for short-term trade and SH? If so, where would you put the stop? Have the best of days, Tim. So, Tim, you know, the SH is the short um, S&P. Probably, the way I'm looking at the market right now, because I do think there's limited upside just in this particular phase, even if we get to a leg C and a D in the Dow and even in the S&P, um, 
This is really tough. Probably two days ago, I should have thought of something about our long position, maybe take a little bit off. Uh, but uh, we've taken a little bit off for swing traders. It's made a lot of money up to this point. I, I, I'd have to think about how to protect ourselves. But if it's a new position, I just have to stick with my theory that this is a peak B. The MACD is good, stochastic is good. Somehow or other by Thursday, Friday, there should be another move to the upside, maybe leg C, maybe even a D. I'm just going to say, Tim, if it's me, I'm not looking to short just yet, although a lot of things were looking really good for a short side. I just said, let's hold off because I want to get the indexes in sync. The S&P is exactly the same. It's made a peak B. This is a deeper correction today than any of the other red bars it's had for quite a while. But I'm just going to say, I think this somehow or other we get to slightly higher highs. So um, forgive me. I'm not going to give you an answer to that to say yes. Now, Greg wants to know about pass. That's Pan American Silver trading at 13.18, down 16 cents. Morning Basel, would you look at pass for me? I saw a position at 11.87. Oh, nice. And took one third off this morning. Bravo. At 13.60, you're already looking very good. I have planned to adding back on a pullback. The remaining position has a stop at my entry. What levels should I be watching? What do you think? Thanks, Greg. So, Greg, this is what I'm going to say to you. At the 200 period moving average right now, um, it hit it. It went above it. Now it's way below it. The 120 minute chart is trading, if I can hit the right thing, A, B, C. This is a D. I, I like your plan. Have patience. You've got your core position. I still think, even though the dollar's moving, Bullard, I guess, in the den, they say Bullard said something other. The, the dollar looks to me with this doji candle that is trying to start to establish some kind of a support level. I don't think it's quite ready yet. I still like the overall monthly chart of the, of the dollar. I'm not saying gold has made any kind of a top, but I am saying that it's extremely extended. If there's anything that purports to be kind of good geopolitical news, I don't know how that's going to be. But if there is, gold should pull back. But at this particular point, at 1427, gold has really good support in the 1400 to 1385 area. And silver is trading not as well. It's now down uh, 0.02 at 1537. Okay, I know what I want to do. Pan American silver trading at 1316. The key support is going to be between 12.90 to 12.72 ish. What was the gap down there? 12.95. Yeah, under the gap. So above the above the gap high of 12.87. I think we get. What I'm going to say to you is, let's look at this again. Give me an email in two days' time. If Pan American Silver has pulled back underneath 12.90, my thinking is that the 12, somewhere in the 12.60 to 12.40 area is where it could have another rebound because it's only a leg A in the weekly. But if it's a single leg A in the weekly and it's and Pan American Silver suddenly takes out 11.60 by next week, you know, I could do that. The way it went up, um, then I would say wait, hold off on any adding on. But the the 12 mid-12, 50 area, that's where we want to look at it again for a rebound to a slightly higher high. So I hope that helps you. Um, ooh, the remaining position has a stop at my entry. The only thing is I'm going to say to you, I would raise the stop on your entry after such a spectacular move. Uh, 20, 18, maybe I can't do it quickly. I, I, well, I don't know the, exactly the prices yet, but about an 18 to 22% move. I would not be giving back as much as my entry point. I definitely would make it a profit. 11.87, you're in. Some part of your position, I would say 12.20. I don't want to, below 12.20, it's a real problem. So don't don't give back too much. That's really the, the issue. Okay, next question I had was, uh, if I can just find it. Oh, crude oil. Crude oil is trading at... Um, up 15 cents to 58.05. I like this rebound. It's only a rebound. It says it's now made as some kind of a base in the 51, 52 area. But the 59.80 is the continuous contract 200 period exponential moving average resistance. I think it's headed that way. So far, it's holding well. That's number one. Number two is I did the TLT, but I'm going to just do it again to say the TLT breaking above 134.10. 
would actually be spectacular action, and that would say that yields are going even lower. I think yields are ready for a little bit of a bounce. That's really the what I wanted to mention at this point. I think they're going to have a little bit of a bounce. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tigers, and this is our Dow's down 100. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Don't forget, folks, Steve Rhodes comes up, Dave White comes up, Tom O'Brien comes up. I'll probably be on with Tom later on this afternoon. So, look, the UUP is rallying a little bit. But, look, the EUR, USD, the euro, dollar, currency pair, leg D, just above the 200-period moving average. What do I usually expect? That 200-period moving average, is if it hasn't been there for a very long time, very long time. Look at this. Uh, wait, I'm still squeezing. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Um, yeah, it didn't even touch it on that rally going back to January of 2019, January the 10th. Let me keep squeezing. And finally, it went over it. Oh, no, I can't even go back far enough. So the euro has just been down, down, lower lows and lower highs. There was the uh, down channel, and it managed to rise above it. And now it's slightly above the 200-period moving average for the very first time. I'm going to draw a rectangle in here to say I'm expecting some kind of a trading band. It doesn't have to break down. I just think there's a trading band as it takes a bit of a rest. If you're looking at the USDJPY, it should be coming off the bottom. Yep, there it is. Huge arch formation. Remember, the Chapman Wave were made up of arches and, and, and cups, and that's all there is to it. And we went down with a doji candle. Let's see, open this up a little bit here. Look at that. So it didn't go down to the most recent low, did it? No, uh, I can't see. No. So it's at 107.244. If it's going to rally, 
it can't just rally to 108. It has to go to 108.50. It actually has to go above all the recent resistance levels of 108.72. So this is just the start of maybe a little attempt to rally. The whole thing is, will gold just give a little bit of a pullback here, just maybe pull back to the yesterday's candle low, or at 1,400, maybe test, test it? I just don't know, because the MACD and stochastic are really good. So it's going to have to be some appeasing news that says crisis, uh, you know, gold crisis, geopolitical crisis is not there. The XLF, I want you to look at if the XLF is pulling back uh, quite sharply intraday, and now it's only down two at 2709. That, that, you want to see the financial start to move independent, to say, look, we, we've done our job. We're going to move higher because we've got good fundies, etc., going on. I'll be back a little later with Tom. Otherwise, see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call. Hope to see you uh, tomorrow at this time. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom.